Hello, welcome back. It is your friend, your sister, fixing my hair, um, Marlena Parks. So excited to talk with you again today and um, just connect again around this amazing, good study that we have been studying. If you don't know, we are walking through each and every week of the Big Idea Food um, devotional. It is a weekly devotional for entrepreneurs, side hustlers, and dreamers. If you don't know, get into it. It is your friend if you are building a business, a vision, a dream, a creative endeavor, just being creative out here. <laughs> it is definitely the thing you want to, um, your companion to guide you along that journey. And uh, we've, we've been walking through each and every devotion um, every single week for 50 weeks. This is week 51. Um, you may be here because you are actually walking through the written version inside of the study journal. Um, and if so, if that is you as well, welcome, welcome back. And yeah, let's get into another great study. I will go ahead and pray. Sorry, my nose is itching. Funny diversion real quick. My best friend, okay, my supposed to be my best friend did not know. <laughs> and I thought maybe y'all don't know either, but my nose, I think I have some sort of allergy. So like for some reason, like it's like my body heats up and then it start my nose starts itching. My friend thought it was like a nervous itch when I'm talking. I just like start itching. Like, you know how you might play with your hair or something like that when you get nervous. She thought that's what it was. I'm like, I told you, I think it's an allergy. She's like, I didn't realize it was just like actually physically itching. I'm like, yes. So anyway, in case you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> but anyway, because um, I know it's happened as I've recorded these messages, um, but I'm pretty sure it's gluten. I just had a sandwich and it's pretty consistent. So it's my fault. But pray for me. I'm not being weird. My body is being weird to me. Why are you being weird to me? So anyway, um, let's pray. <laughs> Lord, we need you. Um, my body, clearly, my nose needs you because it is itching right now. Um, but we just ask that you would come on into this space with us as always. <sighs> and first, um, we, we praise you and thank you for you and your awesomeness, your goodness, your presenceness. Thank you, Lord, just for being God and for the way that you care for us and keep us um, the way that you care for me in the midst of my nose itching. <laughs> um, but Lord, I just invite you into this uh, live as always, Lord, you know exactly what you want to be said. Um, Father, even as you've reminded me again that you are constantly playing chess, not checkers. So you know um, what you want to be recorded today. You know what the people showing up live or watching this 20 years from now need to hear. And so I just ask that you would speak through me and have your way with whatever we talk about today. Um, just let your words be in my mouth and, um, and have your way. And I just pray for each and every heart that, that is coming to listen today or in the future that you would prepare that heart. Um, prepare the minds as well. Let, let our hearts and minds be good ground to receive the word that you have for us in this time. Help us to receive it. Let your word yield fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold in our lives and in our businesses. Um, let not the enemy steal not one seed that you want to plant within us today, um, but let your word yield fruit in us, Lord. And we are hungry, so we are just coming to you looking for our bread for today, our daily bread. So just please feed us um, and help us to receive it. And um, we just, I depend on you, Lord. <laughs> I depend on you. This is your life. This is your space. I am your vessel. So just let me decrease, let you increase, let you get the glory. And um, that's it. That's all. We love you. We praise you. And I ask and receive all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What's up, dad? My dad in the building. My earthly dad. <laughs> Um, but anyway, like I said, we are getting into week 51 of the Big Idea Food uh, devotional, and this week is called I Know My Mission. And if you're watching this live, I titled this um, Jesus Level Focus, and um, I think that's what we're going to be talking about today, honestly, um, because we need it. <laughs> And as always, with most things, Jesus is literally our mentor for everything. <laughs> Just he shows us how to do and live life. He shows us how to operate in business and operate in our ministry and calling. And 
he is just the ultimate example always and we just need him so much all my little brothers in the house are y'all at home together watching me <laughs> i love it what's up y'all my brother bear hi hugs i love y'all um but yeah just like everything else we need uh we need jesus Jesus' example and um, many of us are building businesses and I myself we gonna get into it but <laughs> it's very easy to get distracted when you are doing work and Jesus had a lot of opportunities to get distracted and he was able to stay focused and so um, you know as we get to the end of the year it can be a really busy time that's kind of when we're recording this now but no matter what time of year it is for you as you're listening to this um, if you are experiencing distractions, if you are experiencing noise, if you're experiencing people talking and telling you what they think you should do and what they want you to do, right, with, with your business, with your life, <laughs> whatever the case may be, I think this is going to be a really good message for you to listen to and tap into because we're going to talk about just, just staying focused and how to do that and, and look at some scriptures to, to help us with that. So lock in and let's get into it um if you have your book you can get it on amazon if you don't but if you have your book we are on week 51 i know my mission and um the scripture that is based on is actually john 6 15 and the new king james version says therefore when jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king he departed again to the mountain by himself alone and I share this scripture as we're talking about the focus, like Jesus level focus and knowing our mission, because ultimately Jesus was here <laughs> and sent to die on the cross for our sins. Right. He had a very specific mission and calling from God. But when he was here walking out that calling, if you let the people, <laughs> you know, tell him what he, they wanted him to do, the people were like, no, you got to become king. Like, we need a ruler right now. Like, forget this cross business. They didn't know about the cross. But ultimately, they were like, no, you are the way that you are teaching, the the impact that you're making, the souls that are being healed and all this. Like, you got to be our next king. Like, there's just no way. It, you're the king. And... um Literally, it didn't. It took two seconds for him to be like, oh, I see what y'all are trying to do. Let me go. And like it says, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. He was like, let me go <laughs> and be, be, get alone because y'all are trying to do something that God did not send me to do. Right. And I love this as a beautiful exam, example of staying on mission. Um, and especially for myself, because um, I, it's, it was so funny preparing this for this week, because when I wrote this devotional originally, again, at this point, it's been six, seven years since I wrote this, this stuff. Uh, right. Like my dad said, he had a greater vision than just ruling. Hey, Nakia. Hey, bestie. My Keela's here. Um, he where was I at? Y'all don't got me distracted, but it's OK. <laughs> Oh, it was funny because as I was preparing for this, this week, just going back through this again, I wrote this like seven years ago when I actually wrote it. Um, I wrote it and I was talking about in the devotional, like Jesus knew he wasn't supposed to become king. People will have you like doing stuff that you weren't called to do and you got to stay on mission, right? Like that was the, the gist of the message. And it's so funny looking back because after I released, you know, my calling work, which is this book, right? This book is you know was very much led by god for me to write and produce and put out there but after i put it out there i got caught up in this exact thing i did not know my mission <laughs> i thought i did i thought i knew my mission um but i got distracted i got distracted people were like oh my gosh like you had so much success with the book like coach me i want to learn how to put a book out like you did so i started coaching coaching authors right um, and that led to the coaching and doing other stuff and building a community and, and all this stuff. Um, and it took me some time to get clear on what my mission actually was. You know, I had an mission when I released the book and a vision and a plan. Um, but it was like I got off track after releasing the first sort of part of that vision. Right. And I let people kind of guide what I was doing with my time and space. So unlike Jesus, as soon as Jesus saw them, he perceived, I love how it says Jesus perceived that they were about to come and make him king. 
he dipped out. And it was like, I didn't perceive it. I didn't perceive what was happening. I let the, I let the, the talk and the, and the people's thoughts and ideas and, and what they were pulling on me for, I let that become my guide, right? And so um, it was just so funny to read this because it's like, I'm over here preaching and messed around and did exactly what I told y'all not to do, <laughs> right? But, you know, we praise God seven years later um, I'm a lot clearer on what the big idea of food, what my mission is, you know, in life and what I'm supposed to be doing and focused on. And now I got blinders on y'all. I got blinders on just like Jesus. We got Jesus level focus, or that's my aspiration at least <laughs> is to maintain this level of focus now that I am a lot clearer about what I'm supposed to be doing. And so, um, I get to share from, from having been in both, um, you know, um, been in both places, right. Where I've been lost and just letting the people lead me versus when I've been a lot clearer and letting God lead me. So wherever you fall on that, on that spectrum, I believe we have some stuff to talk about today. That's going to be beneficial. So if you are taking notes, definitely get ready. Um, if you are, if you have your journal, let's tap, tap into this week's study. Uh, how many points do we have today? I think we only have two points today. Y'all No, just kidding. We have three points. We have three. Hey, Nabisha. Um, So we got three points today. Let's talk about them. Um, Point number one uh, is so good. And really what we just looked at is such a great example of this. But point number one, if you're taking notes, is seclusion from unaligned voices is a biblical life hack that helps me stay on mission. Okay, seclusion. Y'all know what seclusion is, right? Seclusion from unaligned voices is a biblical life hack that helps me stay on mission. Whew. And let me just unpack that, right? <laughs> As we, and we'll unpack that with scripture, but basically it's saying like getting alone and quiet, getting away from all the noise and the chatter and the people is literally a biblical, like, it, I spent some time and saw so many examples of this in the Bible. I'm sharing three examples with you, but I'm sure there's more that can be found. But as I was seeing these, I saw a pattern and I'm like, oh, this is a part of like how God operates and how God moves. If he's called you to something, if he is, he has called you out and, and summoned you for some sort of mission, like he is going to at some point in time bring you into seclusion (laughs) so that you can focus right and stay on track with that thing and so let's look at some of these examples right because i I believe you want to stay on mission right i do so let's look at some of these examples um the first one that i had to share is actually found in genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 4 and this is abraham okay and this is uh the new living translation it says the lord had said to abram leave your native country your relatives your father's family all the chatter all the noise all the people following other gods leave that space right and go to the land that i will show you and i will make you into a great nation i will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others i will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt all the families on earth will be blessed through you and so abram departed as the lord had instructed and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years years old when he left. Um, God has something for Abram, Abram to do, right? As we see later in the Bible, right? Abraham had a mission. He was going to literally, he become the father of many nations, right? Um, starting with the father of um, Israel, the nation of Israel. And um, God had to bring him out in order to get him. He had to seclude him in order to bring him into that space where he could become that father. Right. And fulfill the calling. Right. God said, I will make you into a great nation. That's the mission. You're about to become a great nation. I need you to come come away from here. Right. And uh, it's just a great example (laughs) of how God of how God moves for some reason. And maybe only God knows, you know, we can only kind of guess at it but for some reason he couldn't make Abram a great nation in the midst of where he already was right he couldn't do it in his home country where his relatives and parents were right he had to bring him out 
And so um, if he had stayed, right, if he had not been obedient to allow God to lead him into this, this seclusion, right, if he had not been obedient to that, it could be a whole different story, right? Like he could not fulfill his mission by staying not secluded, right, <laughs> by staying out and connected with and among his native country and relatives and family. And so, again, as we're talking about seclusion from unaligned voices is a biblical life hack that helps me stay on mission. Right. We can essentially, you know, Abram and, and the voices in his home country weren't aligned. Right. They didn't know nothing about what God was trying to do, because at the end of the day, God was looking for a nation to birth his son through. Right. He was he was building and putting the pieces into place that would ultimately bring um, the lineage, right, of Jesus the Christ, <laughs> right? So God had a whole chestnut checkers plan that was enacted and Abraham was a pivotal part of that. Like, whatever it is that God has called you to do, <laughs> trust and believe your part is not a small part. It is not a small part. It is a pivotal part, right? Abraham knew that he was going to become a great nation, but he may not have realized or known that ultimately the the Christ, right, the son of the living God was going to come through his lineage. Like what a big major deal. And as I look at that and I think about the things that God is calling you to do and me to do, it's like it may seem like it's a small, a small thing or, a, you know, in the grand scheme of things, but you don't know how major and how important it is. You don't know what piece of the puzzle that you are doing that's actually God is using to work this other piece over here and these pieces over here. Like your piece is so needed, no matter how small it seems, right? No matter how insignificant it seems, it's very important. It's very, very, very important. You are very important. Right. He didn't call you just to give you something to do. Right. I think sometimes we get caught up in that. Like we just think, oh, you know, this is my purpose. This is the thing that God has given me. And it's just for me. It's my thing. You know, I'm passionate about this and it gets me excited and I, I enjoy it. And, you know, he's blessed me to know my vision. And you know what I'm saying? And it can be really like you can think that it's really about you and there's no real deeper, or greater connection. But nothing God does. <laughs> is shallow it's all deep <laughs> it's all deep and it's something bigger and grander that he has for you to do than the specific thing he's called you to do right or or the specific thing he's called you to do is a part of a grander scheme of things and so it's so important right like if you feel that nudge to like seclude a little bit Maybe it's you feel it in this season. Maybe you feel it on a certain day and you're just like, I need to go and like duck off for a hot second. Right. Like get quiet for a minute. Like I just feel like something, you know, like that is God does that. <laughs> just know like it's not something that's out of the norm for how God moves and operates with his people. And he uses seclusion to get you into alignment with what he has called you to do. And we need that seclusion because again, a lot of times the people have no idea. I just heard a message, actually the snack for today, if you have your study journal, the snack sermon that I shared um, is so good. Like, please listen to that. Do not play games, listen to that message. It's so good. If you need to be focused, just listen. But um, it was, it's a sermon from Teray Roberts and he said a quote that I really enjoyed. He's like, typically people, most people are late to, to your party, right? Like most people are late <laughs> to the party of you, whatever it is that God got, got moving with you and your world and what's the amazingness, right? He said, I'm going to make you into a great nation. The greatness that God is doing in you. A lot of people have no idea, right? They, you know, they're busy with whatever God's doing in their life and their mind, right? So they, they're late to your party. They don't even know. And so sometimes you have to be secluded from those voices because they can't be aligned if they don't know what God has said to you, right? They can only speak from what they know, from what they think, um, from even what they you know, believe that God might want for your life. But at the end of the day, God's going to let you know what voices you need to seclude from and what voices are actually aligned. <laughs> and so it's very important if you feel that nudge, if you feel that pull to seclude yourself and that's the thing right you may feel that pull to seclude in a season you may feel that pull to seclude 
um, on a specific day and just like, I just feel like I need to go and pray for a second, right? Or you may feel the need to seclude from some people, <laughs> right? You may be feeling that pull to like, mm, I don't need to share this with you. Mm, I'm going to seclude from giving you the full tea of me right now because it's not feeling, it's not giving alignment, <laughs> right? And so whatever it looks like for you, whatever it feels like for you, um, if you're sensing that pull to seclude, pay attention to that because God does this. He does that. He does a lot of stuff by pulling you out of environments, right, that are going to derail you ultimately, okay? So pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. What you are doing is so important and it does not need to be tainted <laughs> by people and their thoughts and their opinions because they don't know. They don't know. God will tell you the people that, that know, right? God will, God will make it clear who are the people that need to be there, right? Just like Jesus had his core three, my bestie uh, Leslie Worth the Work is here as well. Um, and she will tell you all about creating your circle of faith and everything else, right? Like Jesus had his, his like closest disciple core people in his group and God let him know who those people were. So he'll let you know who the aligned voices are. And sometimes even they don't know, right? He, he had to tell Peter, wait, was Peter one of the core three? He was one of the core three, Peter, James, and John, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. Um, but he even had to tell Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Because <laughs> Peter tried to tell him he didn't have to go to the cross. So, I mean, every now and then, even the people in your core got to get checked every now and then, right? Because at the end of the day, <laughs> you know what God has called you to do, right? And nobody knows it as intimately as you do because you received the call. So, it's your responsibility to stay true and honor the call and honor when God is telling you, seclude from them, seclude from this place seclude in this moment we got to pay attention and we got to do what we have asked him to, what he has asked us to do um worth the work said it's not small at all it's gold okay it's golden amen um maurice with the light bulb <laughs> our relational stadium yes i couldn't think of the i don't know why i couldn't think of the word but yes the her relational stadium okay y'all get into it it's so so powerful um peter james and john was jesus court three yes thank you friend i don't know why my, my brain was blanking out for a second um, but so, yeah, so that's Abram, right? This is before he became Abraham. That was, he's our first example of, again, seclusion from unaligned voices being that biblical hack to help us stay on mission. Um, so let's look at another example. Uh, this is Moses. All right. This is Exodus 24 verses 12 through 15. And the New King James Version says, then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and be there. And I will give you tablets of stone and the law and commandments, which I have written that you may teach them. Here go another calling. OK, callings look a lot like tasks. <laughs> I need you to do this. Right. We be talking about calling and this mantle and all this stuff. But a lot of times it's like I've asked you to do something. That's your calling. OK, can you do this, please? <laughs> um, that was a word for somebody. But um, come up to me on this mountain so I can give you these commandments and, and you can, you know, get them uh, written on these tablets so you can teach the people these commandments and what I want them to know. Right. So Moses was called Moses was called up to a mountain and it says, so Moses arose with his assistant Joshua and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And Moses said to the elders, wait here for us until we come back to you. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, and I love this, too, because um, what Moses did in order to follow and, and follow the call and the pull of God into seclusion was really dope here in this next part. Right. He told the elders who were with him because God said this to Moses in the company of, you know, his kind of his squad. Right. His squad of like leaders and elders. But he's like, Moses, I need you to come up here to this mountain with me by myself and so by yourself so Moses was like okay elders okay squad like wait here for us until we come back to you y'all got Aaron and her with you so if any man has a difficulty let him go to them okay let them handle any issues because typically I handle them but because I'm gonna be gone I'm gonna need you to handle these issues like I love this example because Moses had to actually delegate some stuff, right? He had to put some, some, some protocol into place in order to follow 
the call of God into seclusion, right? There be there may be some things that you could easily let become an excuse. Like God, I can't, you know, I can't take this sabbatical with you, or I can't, you know, I can't come up here to this mountain with you, God, because I got all this stuff going on, all this stuff brewing and bubbling, like all these irons in the fire, Lord. Like I don't have time, I don't have space, and it's like no, that's not an excuse, right? Follow what Moses did. Moses did what he had to do to do what God told him to do, which was let me put people in place to handle my work until I return. Right. Let me put some systems in place to handle this work until I get back. Um, And many times we we may have to do that, too. That's just hitting me even even now as I'm talking about it. Like (laughs) this did not come to me before. Um, What systems do you need to put in place? What systems do I need to put in place? Um, If God is calling me into seclusion um, and really, ultimately, I think what that's talking about is there's no excuses. There is no excuse. (laughs) If God is like, come do this, get away with me. You just you just got to do it. You got to figure it out. (laughs) So it may not be that you need to put people in place, but you might have to do something. You might have to get a babysitter for a night. You may have to, um, you know take a day off, take a vacation day. Um, you may have to dedicate your lunch break to talking to God or like me this morning, right? Like God had a, a whole entire download for me this morning. <laughs> and I'm like, Lord, usually, you know, I have another rhythm and schedule going on in the morning time. And here you are kind of buttoning into that. But also you are Lord and I'm here for you. And so we gonna, we gonna put that to the side later and we gonna focus on what you <laughs> what you are asking me to do right now right um and so yeah ultimately there's never an excuse right we got to do what what we got to do to follow that call into seclusion because again he needs you to be secluded in this moment for whatever reason he knows more than you know but you got to obey we got to do what he's called us to do Nakia said that no matter how much we feel we want to or need to sometimes it's not our job to convince others of God's calling on our lives Ooh, now Whew. Now that's good. That's good because because sometimes we feel like we need to, right? If I could just make help them understand, you know, like even Abraham bringing Lot when really Lot, I don't, you know, Lot wasn't really supposed to be in the mix, but you know, what I'm saying it's like, I mean, but they, you know, like I can't, and it's like, no, you just God, if if they are an aligned voice in your life in this season like it's going to be abundantly clear and you can't make them what they're not that is so good only God can speak into somebody else's heart and mind about you and your vision only God can give them a revelation of you and your vision um and if he hasn't given them that revelation there might be some separation (laughs) there might be some seclusion in this area right of your life um yeah just like that's actually reminded me of how god gave peter the revelation that jesus was the christ right when jesus was like who do you say that i am peter was like oh you're the son you're the messiah (laughs) you the one and it's like this is why you court three peter this right here this this what i'm going that revelation is what I'm building my church on. Um, so this is why you can come on up to, to this level with me, right? You can come into this level of seclusion with me because you have a revelation about me um, that that God hasn't given everybody. So it's like, oof, we got to pay attention to the people that got the revelation. I praise God. I praise God. I praise God <laughs> for my besties, my friends um, that understand and have a revelation about me. I praise God. He will put people in your life. He will literally ordain people to you, right, that are supposed to be there, that know about you, that are early to your party. <laughs> he will give you those people. And it's just so beautiful when he does that. He knows who needs to be in your court and in your corner. And um, he will take care of even that, too. He's going to give you and, and equip you with everything you need for this mission. Like everything that you need to stay focused and on track and aligned with it. He he thought of everything before you thought of everything. Like literally, um, he's worth the work with the, with the smiley face. Yes. Like he thought of everything before you even could think about it. And so like don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy trying to bring people along. 
who don't get it. He's going to bring you to people because you need you need community and that it may feel like you got to be alone for a little bit. But God got you. God is going to bring you the people that you need in your quarter to follow through. Don't try to manufacture it. Do not try to manufacture it because that's how you get off track. And we talk about Jesus level focus. OK, I'm so sorry. Who knows? I just wish I could pour like I wish I had an ice cube that I could just put on it. So it would stop it. <laughs> But amen, amen. So Moses gives us another example of God calling people into seclusion. Last but not least, we already talked about Jesus. We already talked about John 6, um, 15. But, you know, Jesus is our ultimate example of this. Um, Not only did Jesus do this um, when he perceived that the people were about to make him king, he withdrew, right? He withdrew and went away by himself. But we also know that Jesus made a habit of withdrawing <laughs> into, um, thank you for praying for <laughs> We also know that Jesus made a habit of withdrawing away to pray and be with God, right? And I just think about that, even as you are, if, as we want to remain focused on the mission that God has given us, I think we have to look at that pattern and example that Jesus showed to us of going away with God. He made a habit of that. Because it's easy, you can be, you can be, go to bed focused and wake up not focused that easily, that quickly, right? (laughs) And so we we have to build and bake in that habit of going to God on a consistent basis daily, right? Because daily, minutely, as one of my uh, other friends will say, minutely, there's things coming to try to get you off track, right? But if you make that habit of going away by yourself and being with God, and reconnecting with him, reconnecting with your focus, you are going to be able to stay on track. So look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. That's what we're doing today. We're looking at him <laughs> to help us stay focused because he did it. He did it perfectly. Like, I just, man, when I think about, like, he literally could have, it could have been one thing that just got him off track and he didn't go to the cross. Like, anything. There were so many things that happened in his life that could have been like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. (laughs) I'm going to go become king or I'm going to stay a carpenter. I'm not trying to do all that. I'm not trying to live that life. I'm good, God. Let me go do this. And if he had the wrong people in his corner, you know what I'm saying? Like if he didn't have that connection with God and that that habitual um, practice of going away and being with God and staying on track, (laughs) reconnecting with his mission and vision, like it could have been a whole nother story. And we out here with no salvation. Like what? No. That's how important what God is calling you to do is like, it's not obviously Jesus already did the most important thing that ever could be done (laughs) by dying on the cross for us. Right. And being raised from the dead. But whatever God has called you to do, think about it, having that level of importance and that level of impact. Like it has eternal impact because at the end of the day, whatever he's called you to do is for his kingdom. And ultimately his kingdom (laughs) is composed of souls that he is trying to bring into the fold so that we can all have eternal life right and instead of eternal damnation and so whatever it is he's called you to do no matter how non-religiously connected it may seem it's still working into his greater plan of bringing souls to him so it's very important that you follow what he tells you to do okay and to stay on track with that (laughs) it's very important that you seclude right so hopefully this is all making sense Uh, Rail Williams said I popped on at the right time I just uh, went through a bad experience working with a team on my last production oh man ooh, I'm so sorry to hear that Um, but I'm glad hopefully that um, you said you went through it so hopefully you're on the other side of it Um, but definitely yeah share anything if you have questions or anything you want to chat through with that um, definitely let us know because tell you what we need God we need his help uh, with the people he puts around us, it may be on a team that you didn't even have control of, right? And you got to seclude in a way. From, oof, it's just, it gets deep. Um, but yeah, hopefully um, you get a word that you needed today. Uh, Worth the Work said that habit of withdrawing is vital to the health of our soul. Yes, yes, that part too. So vital, so vital. It's, it's one of those things that has many <laughs> benefits. <laughs> so we just need to do it because it's going to give you all the nutrients that your soul needs, that your, your vision needs. 
um, all the things. So let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. Next point. And I don't know why. Let me let me open up the study journal. Because I'm like, did I put a new... Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, I'm tripping. I thought there was three points, but it's just two today. It's just two. Um, so the last point of today, hopefully you've gotten something so far, but today's last point is staying on my God-given mission will lead to my highest level of impact, right? Staying on my God-given mission will lead to my highest level level of impact i just had to close my eyes as i say that because whoo there is impact that you can make and there and and it it helps people it's good right but you've heard this before right it may be a good thing but not a god thing right it may be impact but it may not be your highest level of impact just like Jesus, right? He could have stopped, right? I'm, I'm here. I'm blind. Eyes are open. Sick is getting healed. Demons getting cast out. I'm impactful. Like what more needs to happen, right? He could have stopped there because impact is being impacted, right? The impact is impacting <laughs> already, but there was more, there was greater. There was a higher level of impact that he had to go and complete, right? He had to complete it. There is a there is there is a highest level of your impact. There is a highest level of your impact that is going to make an eternal difference in somebody's life. Right. That's what Jesus's highest level of impact was. Right. He had to go so that literally billions of souls could be saved. <laughs> it's just like we <laughs> that's just such a big deal. <laughs> such a big deal. But. That was his highest level of impact, right? He couldn't stop at impacting the souls that he was coming into contact, right? When he was walking on the earth, right? He had to make sure that the people that were coming, you and me and the people who are yet to be born, he had to do, do this for everybody coming down the pipeline. And so you have a highest level of impact too. And there is something like deeper <laughs> and greater right um than maybe what you can see today and so but and maybe you can't even see it maybe you don't even know what it is that's why we have to be secluded with god that's why we have to be connected with him because he knows and we just got to do what he tells us to do right i don't even gotta know what the impact is i don't think i have a clue like i see my high impact and, and the things that i would love to like be responsible for and you know, I have, you know, I'm bringing a million souls to Christ through Big Idea Food, like, would be great. <laughs> and maybe that's something God is going to do through what I, what he's called me to do. I don't, I genuinely, y'all, I used to think I knew, but it was a lot of ambition. <laughs> so since then, I'm like, mm, I don't even know. I know it's big. I know that there's a lot happening. I know that the things that I need to put in place for God to do what he wants to do to for as many people as he wants to do it with, right? I have to build the ark <laughs> in a sense to make sure that that happens. But yeah, even as I'm thinking of building the ark, like I don't think Noah even realized. He's like, I got to build this ark and it's going to rain, but I don't know what the rain, I don't even know what that's really going to, the, the, the impact of that rain is going to look like, right? But I know I got to obey what God told me to do. And so you may not have a clue <laughs> what it is or the, the depth or the brevity of what God has called you to do and what he's going to do with that. Um, all you got to know is you got to do what he tells you to do. <laughs> Just do the task, right? Complete the steps. Uh, and God will take care of the rest. I've reached my daily limit with Instagram. So, um, but the scripture that I really love for this sort of mindset as we're, we're thinking about our highest level of impact and staying like Jesus level, laser focused, um, this is such a beautiful scripture of from the Old Testament that was talking about Jesus, right? And talking about the level of focus that he had, right? Um, this is Isaiah chapter 53, verses 11 through 12. Um, and Isaiah is prophesying about Jesus. And Isaiah says, after this ordeal, right? After he goes through this sacrifice, dying for us, it says he will see 
satisfaction. If you read earlier in chapter 53, you'll see like the ordeal that he went through. But it says after this ordeal, he will see satisfaction by his knowing pain and sacrifice. My righteous servant makes many righteous. It is for their sins that he suffers. And therefore, I will assign him a share with the great. He will divide the spoil with the mighty for having exposed himself to death and being counted among sinners while actually bearing the sin of many and interceding for the offenders. Ugh, it's just such a beautiful picture of literally Jesus knowing what he had to go through. Um, but seeing what was coming, seeing his highest level of impact and going through it anyway. Um, I think there's a scripture, I, there is a scripture in Hebrews, I believe that talks about for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, right? Um, yeah, we got to stay on our mission <laughs> and we got to stay on it through this is even just coming to me now too like we got to stay on it through pain and sacrifice i read the complete jewish bible translation here um by his knowing pain and sacrifice my righteous servant makes many righteous Whew, jesus had to go through the cross um we have to go through some hard stuff as well in order to stay on mission <sighs> And this is the stuff, you know, I don't want to talk about going through the hard stuff. I don't want to deal with going through the hard stuff. <laughs> but like, man, just like Jesus, right? Being, an, being our example, just like he had to go through some, through some hard stuff and carry his cross. Um, we, have a, we have a cross to carry as well. Um, and so that, that cross can also be a source of distraction, right? And a source of like, ooh, okay, I was I was down with this mission until this happened. Listen, I had a very this um, interesting situation. One of my members um, went through a um, like a very tangible spiritual warfare attack this week, and um, we prayed through that thing, and God prevailed through all of it, and it was amazing. Um, but um, she was just so taken aback at how it's like, God called me here to do this thing. I know I'm supposed to be here. And so I know this is spiritual warfare, but it's never gotten physical for me. And that was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't think I've experienced spiritual warfare to where it's, uh, there's been a physical attack, right? And just sitting with her and, and walking with her through that, and the fact that she's like, I, I, I got to be obedient still, right? I still have to go back to this place that God has called me to when there is like physical warfare at this point coming against me. And it was just like, oh my gosh, right? And so that just came back to mind as I'm thinking about this, you know, <sighs> whew. There might be some major stuff that you got to walk through, and I pray that you don't. I don't want to walk through it, right? But if that is a part of your mission and calling, it's like even that, even that, <laughs> we got to go. We have to walk through it, and we have to stay on mission in the midst of that. And I don't know, maybe you are going through something right now that's like, like detrimentally challenging right it could be physically challenging on your body or your mental or something is like I know God called me here but oh my gosh this is harder than I was anticipating like I knew I was ready for for this level but I wasn't ready for that right like if you are experiencing that right now and just walking through that oh my gosh like we gonna have to pray for you because this is not easy <laughs> um but God is with you. And that is why even more so, it's so important for us to do what we've talked about at the beginning of this live and to seclude ourselves and to go away and be with God. He is your literal strength to get through what you are going through. And it, even if it is a, down to a physical attack against you, he is your strength. You can't do it in and of your own strength. You can't do it. You can't complete the mission. <laughs> without his power right so you have to seclude you have to obey you have to go away with him as he is leading and nudging you to so that you can fill up with that power 
right? You have to connect with those aligned voices in your life, right? My, my member, uh, one of my community members who I t shared about just now, she knew she had to come and talk to us and we had to pray. She's like, I need prayer. I mean, we don't always pray during our co-working sessions, but I'm going to need that good prayer. I need y'all to stand with me, right? Sometimes you, and that's one of the things that we learned and, and, and navigated through in that moment was just how important not only coming away and being with God and getting that word and that strength and pulling from him is, but how important your community is that you surround yourself with and that God brings to your life, right? We talked about that earlier, like God will give you the people who are aligned with you and can can stand with you through it. And then there's these other people who ain't going to be able to take, you know, to care for you in that in the same way. And you have to be aligned with the community that he has called you to for your safety sometimes. Right. For your own protection, for you to, to gather around and. Um, and benefit from the power of literally like the saints <laughs> praying on your behalf and covering you, right? Um, there is power in God-given and aligned community that will keep you strong as you go through it. And so we need, we need to seclude with God and we have to, we have to, we have to obey him and stay in the midst of the community that he has called us to. It's so important. It's like so necessary like you can't do it without God and God's power and strength can come through community especially at times when you don't have it to even pray for yourself or believe enough for yourself that's when the, that community can come and, and hold up your arms right while you're going through that thing so this is all just it's just so important if we gonna have Jesus level focus we gonna need God we gonna need aligned voices and aligned community hey Kiera hey Candace um, so that we can stay on, so that we can stay on track and, uh, complete the mission, complete the mission. That's what we're trying to do out here. Um, so I pray that that blesses you like, oh my gosh, if you're going through anything, that's it. So let's go ahead and pray. Um, definitely feel free to drop in the chat. Like if you just, I don't know if you feel led to share anything, definitely share. Um, but I'm going to pray real quick and, um, we'll take it from there. Um, Father, I just thank you so much again, as always, for showing up here today and giving us a word that we needed to hear. Um, you spoke to me and blessed me, and I know that you bless um, those listening, um, and I know that you bless those who will listen. So we just thank you and praise you. And right now, I just lift up everybody who is walking through a spiritual battle. Um, I pray for everybody who has been called to build something for you or complete a mission for you, who is experiencing real attacks, um, maybe spiritual warfare in their mind or maybe physical warfare against them, whatever they're going through right now, I just plead the blood of Jesus over them. I plead the blood of Jesus over their mind. I ask God that you would be shalom peace in their mind, in their heart, in their body, Lord, in their nervous system, even right now, Lord, and just give them that peace that they need in order to keep going, Lord, and give them that strength and help them pull strength from you that they need, God. And Lord, wherever um, they need community, <laughs> Lord, I pray that you would give them eyes to see and ears to hear the people that you have called and assigned to them, Lord. Help them recognize the people and help, help each other recognize each other um, so that we can, we and they, can um, benefit from the community that you have called to them to undergird them and support them as they walk through this, Lord. Um, and just continue to give them wisdom, Lord, as they're walking through it. Give them direction, Lord, and give them the word that they need from you to fuel them up and help them keep going, Lord, and help them not to give up, Lord. We know that the enemy desires to sift us as wheat. We know the enemy desires to steal our faith. We know that the enemy desires to stop whatever work you're doing through them. He desires to stop the mission from, from being accomplished. But, Lord, your will will prevail. Your will will prevail over all, Lord. And so I just pray, Father, that you will help them rise up in the authority that you have given them. Let them tread on the serpents and scorpions coming against them and let their community and squad that you have placed within them just be so strong in you and in the power of Jesus Christ against any opposition. Um, and we just thank you for it, Lord. We love you. We praise you. 
Help us to stay focused on the mission that you called. Help us to realize how important it is and help us to obey every single nudge <laughs> that you are calling us to obey, Lord. Help us complete every single task. And um, we love you. We praise you. We just want to do what you want us to do. So help us do it in every single way, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, that was good, y'all. I am just like, woo. I am full. Okay. I am so full. Hopefully um, you are as well. Hopefully you receive that prayer. Um, y'all, this is, this is the second to last week. Um, hey, Dr. Tia. This is the second to last week. Y'all, like literally next week is the last week of walking through the Big Idea Food live studies. I don't even know what to do. Like, well, I think I do know what to do. I know y'all know I've been like thinking and praying about what to do. I think he just told me in that download earlier that I mentioned that happened this morning. <laughs> I think I know what I'm supposed to do. So more on that um, later. But yeah, y'all, next week um, is the last week. If you are just joining, if this is your first time, like popping up on this live all of these recordings are on the big idea food youtube channel so um tap in if you aren't subscribed to the youtube channel make sure you subscribe now if you're watching this on youtube hit that subscribe button like this video leave a comment okay so the algorithm can algorithm and help more people find out about what we're doing um but yeah um uh, make sure you show up next week if you can um, as we end our study, uh, and again, if you just showed up, you don't have to end, right? Go get you a study journal, baby. Go get you a study journal and tap in 52 weeks. Y'all as good as this is rich as today was. Imagine having all of that for a whole year <laughs> at your fingertips. That is what is available for you. This is, I don't even know how to convey how much just anointing <laughs> and I'm not saying that to brag or nothing I'm literally God has poured out through this study the studies that we've walked through you need it period that's it okay so make sure you get into it um, so that you don't have to go without um, I am actually gonna go through it finally by myself without having to like prepare anything I'm gonna go through it again on my own and I'm very excited about that um, but yeah, next week, um, thank you guys. Thank y'all for the consistency. Thank you for being proud of me. I appreciate you, bestie. Um, next week is called Go Forth. All right. So yeah, make sure you're here for that. If you need to just receive permission to go do what it is that he's called you to do. If you need that push <laughs> to go do it, um, definitely come back next week. We're going to talk about it's time. All right, we have we have spent 51 weeks preparing you, building you up, building up your faith, right? Giving you tools. It's time to go put it to put it to practice. If you haven't already, you ain't gonna have no excuses after next week. Okay, so I love you guys so much. Um, amen. The study journal is God curated. It's very much God curated. That is a great way to say it, Bestie. Um, but yeah, I love you guys so much. Um, thank you for being here. And uh, I will see you next week. Bye, y'all. <laughs>